Welcome back to ICB Garage. This is the next project. This is a 2007 YZ250F. It is a four stroke. And um, I picked this up, uh, I don't know, probably a month ago now. And it's been sitting on the back burner and uh, just now getting to it. Yesterday I sold the uh, YZ426F and uh, opened up some room in the garage. So this guy's coming in now and it's gonna get worked on. Uh, first glance, I haven't really looked this bike over much. Um, the gas line's off. Um, I'm told there isn't any compression or a little compression. The clutch cable was replaced by the previous owner, but the clutch doesn't really feel that great. So I need to take a look at that. Um, just a quick glance down here. I'm seeing a lot of oily mess over here on the, um, the rotor. The rotor's covered in oil, and so isn't that axle, that this end of the axle. So I'm thinking that fork seals, both sides. This side here, it doesn't look too dirty, but yeah, you can see it there. It's, it needs fork seals. So we're gonna have to do fork seals on it. Um, let's try kicking over a little bit. Yeah, there's not a lot of compression. I can hear a little bit, but there's not a lot there. Um, it looks like the kickstart is all worn out and it has been rubbing the frame right there. So we'll have to clean this up a little bit and uh, address the Kickstarter. Uh, previous owner said that he was riding it, it died, and then it had no compression. So we'll check that out. Uh, the tires don't look too bad. They still seem to have the stripe, the paint stripes on them from when they're new. So the tires have been replaced not too long ago and they still look really good. So I'm happy about that. That's good. Uh, some of the aftermarket stuff on there we have these um mica bars aftermarket bars if you can see there pretty nice bars um we have one box buster so probably end up taking that off um we got a breakaway lever on this side and one on this side they don't match so We'll have to look at that, see what's going on with that. Um, other aftermarket stuff, there's two brand new radiators on there. There's two aluminum radiators, two brand new ones. Um, they look like they're all TIG welded together, so those are aftermarket, they were probably expensive. Um, so those are on there. It also has an hour meter, pro tape of hour meter that was put on. Um, it's also got a uh, DRD racing exhaust and it looks to me like it's a full exhaust uh, it's um, spark arrest and front pipe so that's that's cool anything aftermarket adds money or value to the bike I should say um, other than that I don't see anything that's really standing out to me it doesn't seem to leak any oil because it's been sitting it was sitting in the same spot for about four weeks and I didn't really see anything underneath the engine part of the bike, but I did see oil stain under the front wheel, which leads me to believe that this fork seal is gone. Um, I don't know anything about what's going on underneath the seat here as far as an air filter goes. We'll have to check that. Um, there's no gas in the tank. Uh, the gas line was off, so I, it's already been drained. There's nothing in it. Um, so that's where we're at. That's what we have here. Uh, let's see. We got a sight glass on the side here for oil. And it doesn't look like there's any motor oil in it, so that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. Um, let's check the antifreeze. Kind of difficult to do with one hand. And... There is no antifreeze visible, and it's dry, so I'm assuming there's no antifreeze in it. So I don't know if somebody maybe already started working on this motor. I don't know. But the fact there's no antifreeze and there's no motor oil are two bad signs. It does kick over freely, though. 
and I can hear that it has some compression, not a lot. All right, I guess at this point, let's get this guy in the garage. Uh, let's start taking it apart and digging in and um, see what we got. Oh, we got it on the stand. Um, if you guys can see that. I made that. Uh, I just figured it'd be a lot easier than using my uh, quick jacks like I did on the previous bike that I re redid. Um, I just think that these will be easier. This will be easier to have it up in the air and uh, to work on. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with this on this build and see how it works. Now, this box came with the bike, and it's a uh, box of spare parts. So we got a couple extra number plates here. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we got. We have uh, an extra radiator cap. That looks like... Uh, Throttle, throttle cover. We got an extra pipe. And this is uh, USF Qualified Summit Race, Summit Industries. Not really sure what this is. Um, doesn't look so hot, but it might be usable. We'll hang on to it. And uh, I guess these are the factory radiators, and they got a couple of dents in them. Up, oh, JB Weld on the bottom of that one and the top. So we know why that was replaced. What about this one here? Let's see if we can look at this one. This one doesn't have any JB Weld on it, but it's pretty, pretty twisted. Uh, it looks like we have an uh, extra air filter, which is good. Here's a front pipe, which is in good shape. There is a little bit of a dent there on the bottom, but it's usable. Uh, we got the looks like a brake lever, front brake lever. We have a another brake lever, which is brand new. Uh, I wonder why they didn't put this on. Maybe because uh, different kind altogether. Yep. And then we have a throttle tube. Spare throttle tube. This looks like it might be a uh, axle nut. There is a clutch cable in here. Um, looks like a brand new lever. Some miscellaneous nuts and bolts. Uh, here's the manifold flange for the stock pipe. Uh, looks like some type of an aftermarket adjuster for the clutch. That looks like a clutch clutch lever spring. That's probably why the spring isn't working. That's probably why the clutch doesn't feel right. Couple of miscellaneous screws. Empty bag. Empty bag. And uh, what looks to me like these are exhaust springs. So we got a few extra pots with it, which is always nice to have. Always nice to have a few extra pots. So we got those along with the bike. Um, I guess at this point here, we'll, uh, set you up in a stand and then I'll take the seat off and, um, let's take a look at the, uh, air filter. Well, we do have an air filter in there. That's a good sign. The fact that it's really dirty is not a good sign, but, um, there's one in there, so that helps. All right, next, we'll remove the tank and um, take a look at what's going on um, underneath that. Now, let's see if there's any antifreeze in this, which I highly doubt. There is antifreeze in it. How about that? That's good. Good to know. Careful. 
so she drains. All right, let's uh, let's check and see if there's motor oil. All right, let's hope there's oil in it. Not gritty. There's not a lot of oil in there, I'll tell you that much. That's not a good sign. So there wasn't a lot of antifreeze and there certainly wasn't a lot of oil. And that isn't good on either end. plug back in so we don't make a mess of the floor. Yeah, the oil, there wasn't a lot of oil in there, and it's really burnt. I mean, previous owner really didn't take very good care of this bike. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be too expensive to fix. So I think at this point what we have to do is um, I need to remove these two motor mounts here. Um, I think I'm going to take the back subframe off the bike because I need to get the airbox out. I need to take the carb off. I need to get the radiators off all the tubes so that I can get at the engine so I won't record all that stuff because that's just all nuts and bolts that's easy stuff I'll come back when um, I start tearing into the engine let's pull this valve cover off see what we got I already stripped all the, um, I took one radiator off. I don't think I need to take the other one off. We can get the top end off from this side. So I'll leave the other one on. All right, let's see what we got going on under here. And that looks pretty clean. I mean, well, wait a minute, hold on. Something happened here. Something happened here. We got pieces of aluminum all up in there. Something let loose. Definitely something let loose. Uh, let me, um, See if we can take a better look here. See if we can spot anything. Yeah, there's, there's pieces of aluminum in there. Big time. I'm not really sure what let loose. Maybe it was the camshaft? I don't know. Something is definitely rattling around in there. There's pieces, there's pieces of uh, aluminum everywhere. And it does have a decompression cam in it, which is good. So it should be easy to start. Uh, what's going on over here? Yeah, there's a shit ton of stuff in there. All right, motor needs to come apart. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, 
I'm gonna pull the cams and um, I'm gonna pull the timing chain adjuster and the cams and um, see where we're at. I'll turn you back on when I'm done, but this is actually, give you guys a good look at the bike. This is uh, how far I got it stripped down. So, can't really see much of what's going on there, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the cam shafts out and then I'll turn you back on. All right, as I was trying to take the cam covers off, I noticed something right here on top. See these guys right here? That is a valve keeper and a valve shim. So I think we're gonna have an ugly situation when I pull those covers off. Let's take the covers off and see what we got. All right, this is very important not to lose that. Got to make sure you grab a hold of that. This don't look too, too bad. A little bit of wear. Not bad though. This is the one over here that's got all the metal debris. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, she got chewed up pretty good. Something got spun around in the cam. You can see it right there. Something got chewed up pretty good. Although the journals are still good, so this is usable. It's, that's a good thing. Just need to, just gonna need to clean it up. This camshaft, on the other hand, I don't think we're gonna get so lucky. Let's pull the decompression cam out first and see what that looks like. All right, the deep compression cam looks good. I don't see any issues with that one at all. Baron feels good. Everything looks good on that. I think I think we're in good shape with that one. That one looks fine. All right, let's get a look at this one. Ah. All right. I think this camshaft's usable. She's got a little scoring on it, but I think I could polish that out. I think I could polish that out, and if we shim the bucket right, I think we'll be in good shape. I don't. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Now, there's the culprit right there. There's the culprit right there. The light. There it is. We got a broken bucket. And I bet the keeper let go, and that's how that bucket broke. I'll bet you that's what happened. Alright, let's uh, grab my magnet and see what happens, see what we can pick up here. Alright. So the bucket, bucket shim's still in there, I think. But it's seen better days. Let me place that over here for now. So we can get a better look at it later. See what else we can fish out of here. All right, there's the top of the, the cam. I don't see the other keeper. I hope that didn't go down to the bottom of the engine. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. There's the other keeper. It is pretty mangled though. The good thing is, it didn't fall into the engine. That's good. And we got the spring here. I think the spring is done. I don't think this spring is gonna be usable. It's another piece. So those are the pieces so far I pulled out of there with my magnet. Um. Yeah, that valve is... Oof. Hold on, let me grab a light. A 
Oh yeah. Wow. That valve stem is completely bent. Um, all right, we gotta pull the head. Fits the crankshaft. Um, it looked like it got a little hot at the top. She's a little discolored, but there's a little side to side plate, but there's nothing, I don't feel any up and down. So I think we're all right. I think the crank's all right. Um, yeah, so let's go over to the bench and let's look at the top end that I took off. Here's all the parts that I took off. Um, I guess we'll start with this. You can see that there's um, some stuff had been rolling around in there. It's pretty chewed up. Not a big deal. Um, I can clean all that up. I'm going to get a top end gasket set anyways. This gasket will be replaced. Um, I clean all that up. That's This is not a big deal. Next. Timing chain guide. Looks pretty good. I don't see any wear on that. We're good to go. Wrist pin. I don't feel anything. Eh, I do feel stuff on here. I'm going to have to replace the wrist pin. I can feel it. There's a little bit of something on there. Need a new wrist pin. Uh, piston. It looks to me like this piston was recently replaced. It seems like it's uh, fairly new. Not a lot of hours on it. But the problem is we got scoring right here. And I guarantee you the reason for the scoring is because... All three valves hit the piston at one point. This middle valve being the worst, it smashed a piece of metal in there. And you can see there's a pretty good dent here and there. So the piston, when it came came up and hit, cocked it like that a little bit, and that's how you got the skirt score. So the piston needs to be replaced. Um, I'm not gonna trust it with that. I mean, it looks like it isn't fractured or anything, but it's scorn. Um, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna have to get a new one. Uh, the cylinder. The cylinder doesn't seem bad. I don't feel anything. It's just visual. Um, you can still see cross hatching in there from whoever rebuilt this the last time. So I am just going to throw a horn on this, and I'm pretty sure that this cylinder is fine. We're good to go with that. Now for the head. This is the best part here. Um, We got some pretty good damage right up in there. I mean, the, the keeper let go and this thing went smashing. I don't know if the piece of the cap fell out right there. So I don't know if um, how much of this went to the bottom of the motor. What I'm going to have to do is. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull the side cases and clean out the um, the bottom of the motor. I'm gonna have to pull the side cover off where the clutch is and clean the bottom of the motor out and clean the screen that's in there. Uh, obviously, a new oil filter and all that. It's got to get done. Um, let's see if I can get that spring out of there. Oof! Doesn't even want to come out. Let's see if I can spin it out. As you can see that spring is bent and that spring is no good. We're gonna need to replace that. The inside of this motor smells funky. It almost smells like storage. It's got a weird smell to it. Ay, ay, ay. I think that we got major problems here with this head. Yep, we do major problems i think this head's not going to be any good it looks like the, the guide is bent and it's bent pretty good too um i don't think i'm going to be able to reuse this head is that the spacer in there yeah the space is in there let's see if I can get this cap out yeah this thing's got a really funky smell to it
I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this thing. Let me, uh, let me contemplate. I'm sure that these valves are not seating properly because they hit the piston, so they probably got a slight bend to them. The exhaust valves will be fine, but these three intake valves are all gotta be replaced. And, uh, as you can see, that is not even in the center anymore. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that thing out. Oh, yeah. That's the, the valve seal itself. Oh, wait a minute, we might be all right. Might be all right, that's the valve seal. But I'm not necessarily sure how I'm gonna get that valve out. I think what we're gonna to have to do is push it down. And we're gonna to have to cut it off. I tried getting that valve out, I can't seem to get it out. As you can see, I cut it with a cutoff wheel. But I can't seem to get it, cut it enough to get it to come out. And I hit the head there a little bit. I got the valve out. It wasn't easy, but it is out. Uh, and you can see this, there's a bit of damage in there. I'm gonna have to get in there with a Dremel and clean those walls up in order for that cap to float smoothly up and down on top of the uh, spring. Um, but that's not a big deal, I can clean that up. This is the valve stem that I, that I took out. And there is the um, valve guide, which I had to pound out. You can see the, the valve is still on it. This did not want to come out easy, it's all bent. I had no way of cutting it, so I had to pound it out. And the way I got it out was with this punch, and this hammer and I just hammered away from the top side here uh, actually no I did it from the back side here I did it from this side I hammered it in from this side until it uh, came all the way out so it's out now and uh, so that's that we got to clean that up so what I'm gonna do now is um I ordered a bunch of stuff today I'll go over it when it gets in there's the um, pieces of valve guide that broke apart. Those pieces fell out when I was hammering away on it. And those are part of the cap. So I got all the stuff I need on order. And uh, should be here in about a week. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to the bike. And um, I'm going to pull this side cover off because we need to um, take out the timing chain so that we can replace it. Uh, I don't want to take a chance of... Um, having that chain stretch, so. I am just gonna replace it. I mean, I'm this far in, I might as well. All right, this is why I wanted to take covers off and look at the bottom of the, the motor. See that right there? That is a piece of that valve cap. A couple pieces of it right there. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to take the other side off as well and um, just make sure we get all those pieces out of there so we don't run into problems later.
I'm gonna pull the clutch out now so that we can uh, pull the push pin so I can get that lever shaft out. Also gives us a chance to uh, to inspect the clutch. That looks good. She is dirty. Here's the pusher, and everything's really dirty. Needs to be cleaned. Some of these Yamahas have a ball baron inside here. Let's see if this one has one. Yep, it does. There it is. We'll definitely want to hang on to that. And then we'll pull the push rod out. We don't need that in there. We'll inspect that. That looks pretty good. I don't see any issues with that. Let's pull the uh, clutch pack out of here. See how that looks. I think this is, looks pretty good to me. We'll check them all. They look good. They don't look burnt. There might be one more in there. All right. They're definitely dry though. They don't have any. Any oil on them. Well, oil them up, put them back in. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, metal in there. All right. So. This spring is the one that was inside the um, the kit. This is not the right spring. I don't know what the spring goes to. But it doesn't go to the brake lever. But luckily, I had this kit here. And I bought this kit for my uh, 426, the one I just sold. YZF426. So we got a couple of things in there that might be usable. You're gonna have parts that cross over from different models and sizes. All right, so here's the spring. This is the spring that I had left over from that kit. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fit this one, so let's find out. I had to play with it for a few minutes. Um, I had the spring on upside down, but now you can see. Now it springs back. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to take the slack out of the line, out of the uh, clutch cable, I should say. So, that's working properly now. We got some ridges on the um, clutch housing. I'm gonna hit those with a file and smooth them out so the clutch doesn't grab, you know, it, it doesn't sputter and um, grab so it's smooth in and out. Uh, I'm gonna do that real quick. It's aluminum, it'll come off quick. I'm not gonna disassemble the clutch. I'll show you what I'm doing. Basically just uh, taking a, I got a little tiny jeweler's file here and I am just lightly knocking off the high spots just to make those plates move in and out smoother. Nothing fancy. And I got a little bit of a burr here so I'm, I'm just hitting that burr off. And then again. Let's put the clutches back in, and um, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on them, because they do look kind of dry. And 
pop it back in. So I'm just going to continue this process like this until, until I get them all in. And when I finish, I will turn you back on. All right, clutch pack's all back in. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the tip of this. On that, I'm gonna push it in. I'm gonna put a little bit on this, and we're gonna push it in. All right. Next, we need our ball bearing, and that's in here. Grab that. There's the ball bearing. That goes in the hole just like that. Then the pusher goes in. And I'm putting a little bit of oil on the Porsche. In good shape we got the timing chain out um, we got this side of the motor tour open we found metal chunks in here which are right there these metal chunks which so I'm glad I took that side cover off well we had to anyways because we we're gonna replace the cam uh, the cam chain or the timing chain um, so glad we took that off we found that we pulled the other we um, we got the top end off um, I got some gasket prep to do I'm gonna prep this surface, this surface, and then the surface on the other side. I'll do that off camera. Um, basically, I do that with a soapstone. Um, I have other videos on in my collection that um, show that process. If you want to see it, go. Um, actually, it's in the very last video I did, the um, EX300. Uh, this side's torn down. Clutch got taken apart and inspected. Oiled the oiled the um, discs, put them back. Uh, the level was missing a spring. I was lucky enough to have one. I threw it in. Um, this is all set now. This is working properly. This will automatically spring back with the clutch cable. Um, that's a beautiful thing. We're good. Um, what else? I have to do prep work on the side cover. I need to strip that gasket. I need to clean this side this side up as well which i will do off camera so and i got this head i gotta rebuild so i got enough video right now for part one so i'm gonna cut it off here uh if the videos are too long people get bored so i will come back in video two what i'll do is i'll finish the head um i will i will record the dremeling part in the next video and um the cleanup of everything and i will go over uh, any pots that I receive in the mail for this bike. We'll do a kind of an unboxing thing because I, I do that with, with just about every build anyway. So, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends, share, the whole nine yards. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you learned something here on how to strip, how to tear down the motor on a uh, YZ250F. And um, as you can see, there's really not much left of this motor. We got it pretty torn down. And um, we'll get into uh, final prep work before we do um, assembly. But that'll be in video two. So um, if you guys want to see video two, 
Make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, you get a notification when I post the next video. Thanks for watching.